All right, we are live. Wow, that was rough, Command. We're live. So Judd has already sent me a text. He was working on a broken lawnmower. So he said he's running a little bit up, a little bit behind. He said start, and he will join in as soon as he can. He said I may have to fill for two to five minutes. No problem. I could fill two to five minutes in my sleep. In my sleep. Why be normal? That's the shirt for the day. Boom. Good question mark. Don't be normal. Now, today we are going to talk. It's a continuation of our publisher series. Judd and I will give our top five, top five victory games, games. So um, why are you seeing these two things? We're going to talk about those real quick and it'll give me some, some time to fill. So first of all, Twilight 2000 is a role-playing, oh, get the glare off, role-playing game from like 1985, 84. Um, let's see. So see, think um, think Red Dawn, but you're a U.S. troop stuck in Poland. Hold on, I can see Judd coming in. Let me grab him real quick. All right. Yeah. Good. We got sound and everything. You look up, you're, you're like out of breath. Mainly, I saw a funny meme. It showed a picture of this dude, Ben. It says, when you're over 30 and you run up the stairs, and it shows this dude leaning over saying, bruh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are exactly right. We got Bongo in, Christmas crest. Checking my beard, man. I was just shaving. I ran out of the bathroom shaving, so y'all didn't want to be seeing my five-day growth there. Mm. I've got a little bit going now. So, real quick, um, I'm talking about how on Kickstarter – let me bring this in. On Kickstarter, Twilight 2000 is basically being reprinted. I think it's like the third edition, fourth edition, whatever. Um, I can't remember the company's name. It's out of Sweden. They do a great job. They did Tales of the Loop, the role-playing game, supposedly uh, great. I play some role-playing games, but I have back this. So um, it's just a great – it was a crunchy um, military role-playing game. So you had – all your vehicles, and you had even, there's tanks, but look at this, ox and camel, ox <laughs> and camel, Judd, <laughs> so you can do anything, so that is on Kickstarter right now, go check that out, um, huh. it's, it's I'm not familiar funded. with that game, sorry, no, no, go ahead, it's already no, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with it, I, I was going to BGG to see a Zill GDW game from, looks like, 98, or 89, Yes. Okay. 89. I thought it was 85, but who knows? Um, the, uh, you're basically U.S. regular troops or whatever stuck in Poland. There's like a limited nuclear exchange, and they've got a whole background history, which is half the fun of a role-playing game. And then my group that was playing it, our whole goal was to get back to the good old USA. So ours was a traveling deal. I get, you can fort up. You can hang out. You can do whatever you want in the game. Now, the other thing going on, real quick, we'll bring this in screen. Let's just grab the lid. This is Race to Moscow. So this is a Phalanx game, that game, that is not even out yet. This was a preview copy I got, but the board and everything is great. And if you go look um, at another video, if you are a Patreon supporter, so you got to be a Patreon supporter, but you can go in and back at $10, and I'm doing a contest. You cannot do drawings. You can't do giveaways, but you can do a contest. The contest is be a $10 supporter or higher, and then you get to submit a B-17 plane name. Some of you know I'm doing session uh, playthroughs with my Patreon supporters' as crew. That's been fun. And submit a name, and that'll make you eligible for the contest. I've got Six games I talk about in a video that's out already. Uh, but in September, I'll be uh, the winner will get Race to Moscow. It's not even available yet. So, and the bits are great. I show those in the video. So go look at that video for more details. But there you go, Judd. I've filled time and you got in really quick. I thought it was going to take a few more minutes. Nah. Hey, Ronald Nickerson, is that, a, is that from that, is that quote from that Aerosmith song, The Fever? It's driving me crazy. You see something you think's a lyric, and I was like, mm, I recognize that. Let's so, see. anyways, we're all here because we're, we're not all there. Boom, let's pull it up. Yeah, there's Ron. Ron is my co pilot, by the way, on Ham Taggery. That's the current name of our of our current B 17. He is the co pilot. 
funny comic up there, John. Uh, which one you want? <laughs> newest one that just popped up. <laughs> oh, hold on. Oh. It moved. It moved. Hey, I, was yeah. I went to the future, and you guys picked Dr. Ruth as your number one. Woohoo! Yeah, I've got a video out on that as well. Um, you can even see, looking at all the victory games that were out there in the later years, they did, what, Playboy and some other sex games and stuff. So I think they found out what made the money. Yeah, that quote was driving me crazy because Garth Brooks did a remake of that old Aerosmith song. And I thought he said, we're all here because he's not all there. It's about bull riding. Anyway, I used to swing dance to that song a lot. It's a real favorite of my wife and I's. Hold on. Okay. Anyway, see something that flashes from the past drives you crazy. I'm picturing you swing dancing in the 90s, and it's a good yeah. picture. Some picture you <laughs> can't unsee. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, man. You're good. Yeah, I like that. Dr. Ruth, number one. I picked that up. You know that. I've got a video out there on unboxing, and my spouse and I are going to play. Like any good victory games game. They have what they call the extended rules for just one couple to play the version as a two-player game instead of a four-player couple game. So, um, yeah, NC-17 on that Dr. Ruth video, a little bit. I had to uh, censor myself, although it was all clinical language. It was clinical, but of a sexual nature. So, boop, self-censored. And, of course, you can, you can read the card that that one had on there. And then it took me back to my medic days. Uh, they spent like a whole week on STDs. Ooh, because a big part of a medic is uh, taking care of the troops. <laughs> so, um, so that was a uh, lot of was, it, was it like Henry Blake teach going over that? I don't know if you saw that MASH episode. <laughs> um, I'm sure I saw that MASH episode. I can't remember it completely. But I'll yeah, tell you what, Art. If they ever make a Jeopardy-based game on Good Times and MASH, I will be Ken Jennings. Wow. Amongst other things, Babylon 5 and others. But those two shows, man, I watched the heck out of when I was young. I think that's do the only thing that I know. You've got to be that on everything. Do you remember your first victory game? Remember how we do that? I do. but uh, And I think I can mention it because it's not part of my five. So it is, of course, yeah, it is, of course, in my Hall of Fame, which means it cannot be on my list. The very first victory game game I ever purchased was Ambush. So and and uh, that's all you'll hear about Ambush from me. <laughs> my first so, game was also Ambush. Really? And I, this is a trip. I can tell you the first time I played the game. How do you do yeah. that? January 20th, 1985. Wow, so you got and, it. For, go ahead. Uh, the reason I know this is not because that was the day Ronald Reagan swore in his second term. <laughs> it's because that was the day Joe Montana beat Dan Marino in the Super Bowl. Oh, so you were playing and watching the game at the same time. Yep. Wow, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I did put all focus into learning the game and playing and and whatever I don't I don't remember it as soon as it hit the uh, hit the shelf I think it was a uh, insta insta buy um, again we won't spend too much time on it but when I had um, Mark Herman on um, I talked about how the back of the box you could see this cartoon action going on and they overlaid the map of the game with the counters on it and of course the the artwork matched the terrain that was on the map, and I was sold. I was like, whoa, this is awesome. I'm also yeah. uh, for Fort Sam Houston is where all the medic training's done, Judd. So uh, so Matthew Albring must have must well, it doesn't mean he was a medic, he could have been a, a nurse or a dental assistant or even a doctor, but that's where the big training, medical training is. Hmm. Yeah, the um, do you know your most recent? Purchase from Victory. Actually, I guess, yeah, you do. You just grabbed it, right? Dr. Ruth? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that one's easy. It's Dr. Ruth. The, after talking to uh, Mark live and learning that it blew away all sales. I don't even think he had a specific number. You know, it's good when he's like, well, it was between 300 and 400,000. They flew off the shelves via Spencer Gifts or Spencer's or whatever it's called. So, I 
had to have it. It was not part of my collection. And I now have it. And I'm actually thrilled with the board. The board is like an Avalon Hill mounted board with these concentric oval circles inside of each other. What? Sorry, hey, Beavis, you said. <laughs> oh. Just, um, just... Sorry. So, <laughs> you're all right. You're all right. And you're like uh, the teacher in front of the high school class, you say something and all the boys start laughing. <laughs> Yeah, well, all the comments under that game, there are all kinds of uh, innuendo comments. Even the extended rules for two-player, I thought, it had to be intentional. That's all I'm saying. So here's a uh, – we've got this. Joe Montana, the only QB with hang time. Go ahead. That's my first – that's my most recent. Yes, and that one – that one came out like 91 or 92, didn't it? Yeah, Mark was already – he was past it. He wasn't working at Victory Games. I think he was a Booz Hamilton by that point or wherever he'd moved on to. But, yeah, the um, – I have um, – what was it? I added them up, something like 21 Mark Herman games, and I've only got two of them because his name was on the box. That <laughs> fire in the lake. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's a – I uh, well, no, don't want it because his name's on the box. It's just like, you know, like Flashpoint Gold and Topic's not a big interest, but because he because he was on it, I figure it's probably going to be pretty good. I watched Callendale's video on it. And so, funny enough, Callendale didn't like it, but he's the kind of dude he'll tell you. He does very detailed playthrough videos, and he doesn't have this game play. I mean, he very deep. And what he didn't like, I actually liked. I thought that sounds kind of cool. So, you know, different folk, strokes for different folks. So, what yeah, element was that? Huh? What is the element that he did not like and you did, if you can break oh, it down? Shit. I, have no, I don't remember now. It was like three years ago. I wanted to say the game because I haven't I haven't played the game yet. I haven't read the rules or anything. Just haven't – topic's not a big interest. So it's – I got like 13 unplayed games, and it's a little more toward the bottom. But something about the – it's the morale of your entire army, which almost kind of sounds like the – I'm sure it's not, but – the Battles of the American Revolution by GMT, they have a system like that. Napoleonic 20s. But I, I don't remember what it was now because it's been years. I saw the video like 2015 and decided then, yeah, I'd like to get that. Then it took me like four years to get it. So, yeah. patient um, man, and you like a deal. Yeah. There's a thing like, I'll pay this much, but I won't pay. And, and it's kind of like eBay. You throw your bid out there, and if you get beat, you get beat. Um, so, um, anyways, finally found – actually, I found a guy that was – I, I remember what – I think he didn't have it rated really highly. So, I just wrote him said, hey, you want it? You interested in selling? So, we worked it out. So, it's a good way to – good way to grab games. Got it. So, Why don't you kick us off with your number five? My number five um, – I only hit, what's funny. I was going to say I only had got two games of victory games back in the eighties, back in their heyday. Part of it was when I turned 16, I got full freedom with the driver's license and games just kind of, you know, but um, also a small town, Kansas. It was a lot of the little Avalon Hill. You could find some sci-fi, lots of um, fantasy stuff. Cause that was all the rage back then. So, but I get my one year trip to Kansas City to King's Crown, and that's how I saw victory games. That always intrigued me, but you look at them and the complexity level is pretty high, and you know, things like that, or you know, times were huge. So, this is the only other one besides Ambush I got. Vietnam, Ooh. yeah, um, came out, I think, in 85, 80, 84, 85. I got this, my dad got it for me. He bribed me for making the honor roll for like four, all four quarters in high school. So, um, Anyway, um, beast of a game. Next Empire of the Sun, second toughest game I ever learned. Um, now, there are, I know there's harder games, Air War Tactical Combat, probably Magic Realm, some of those. But for the, the amount I'm willing to go, um, and I've only dabbled in the game. I have played it on it with a guy for, on um, B, um, Vassal. We worked through it together. And it was tough because the game, the rules are perfectly clear. It's like all victory games. I mean, I think the only one I ever had a problem with was the Mosby's Raiders, but everything else as tough as their games were, the rules are really clear. Mark said, I don't know if you, I missed your thing. You cut out and I came back to my computer and I was like, you guys were gone and I don't know what happened, but I missed your thing with them. But, um, Oh yeah, we, we had a upload. He couldn't get in on the link. So he came in just as a viewer. And then when he finally got the link to work, he had both up. So you were hearing the delay. 
and okay. uh, I, had to, I had to dump the whole feed and and re relink, create a new link. That's what happened okay. there. For anyway. yeah, I stepped away from my computer for a bit and came back and it said this video is unavailable. I'm like, well, I guess he never fixed his problem because it's always having problems. But anyways, I don't know if he talked about it or not, but yeah, did he talk about Bob Ryer, the editor at, v at Victory Games? Yeah, but he even comes me. over when he goes to the Bose, and I always say the full name wrong. Uh, Bose, what's the uh, think tank he goes to, or the, the government company, or whatever? Mark, come uh, on, he goes to the think tank. Bose, yeah, I yeah. always is it Bose? I thought it was I, Bose Hamilton. Say the whole I name again. I thought it was Bose Hamilton um, Allen or something. There you go. It's I, that I don't one. know. Yeah. Either way, I'm sure I got the name wrong, but he he came over and joined them over there as well. Okay, I was wondering what happened, but um, yeah, because I mentioned that to Mark something about how great their rules were, and he said it was because of that guy. Because I thought that's weird that all these designers happen to write darn near perfect rule books. Because you've seen it, <laughs> even some yeah. of the same designers working not with Victory Games have wrote less than perfect rule books. Um, but yeah, the um, anyway. But yeah, the rules make sense. It's just being Vietnam, it's not the most intuitive thing. It plays a lot differently. But it's it's really cool the depth it goes into. But the reason I've only dabbled in it is because uh tough to solo because a lot of hidden movement. And I haven't cracked that nut. And I, I mean it's one of those I haven't sat down to try to crack it. But yeah, me and a guy played a little bit of it on on Vassal and really, really enjoyed it. But it was tough because he'd send me a play. And then I'd be sitting there with my nose in the rule book following his play. And I was like, whoops, well, do, do, do that. That ain't legal. And then I'd do something and whoops, whoops, let me back this play up because that wasn't legal. <laughs> it was not real intuitive, but we did get on top of it and, had, and it was enjoyable. Uh, my my joke is I'm going to win the lottery, except I don't play it. So that's been, been haven't figured out how to solve that. But then I'm going to go out to Vermont. My buddy Grog Bill, he's into this. And we always <laughs> joke about, yeah, I'm going to win the lottery, move out there and hang out with him and play this for like six months. But really enjoyed it. and. The topic you just did it was maybe it's because it was 85 and it was too new, um, too soon, as they say. You didn't see a lot of Vietnam games. I mean, there was the task force, um, Operation Pegasus. I think there was maybe a few ST magazines, the rat one or something, Year of the Rat or something, but not a lot of Vietnam. So when this came out, and then it was it's it's so grand in scope, it's like that's you know, so that's it's it's cool that way. You know, later on, we got some games, Fire in the Lake, um, the um hearts and minds, some of those. But for a while, it seemed like this was about the only way you'd really get your Vietnam on. And I was interested. The other problem I had is my buddies were really into Vietnam as a topic. I was in the 80s. They weren't. So, but I dabbled in it, really enjoyed it. I saw rule books pretty clear. And it's one of those, yeah, I'm never getting rid of it just because I want to, one of those, when you get retired, I want to sit down and spend more time with it, but really enjoyed it for what I have messed with it. So my number five, I have spoken. Wow. Yeah, you and I both need to reach retirement. I think we'll we'll just start like a retirement gaming home or something. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I, I, funny thing, yeah, I'm getting close. I'm getting closer now. But you know, I said when the lottery and go hang out, Bill. That was like ten years ago. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Well, you both have an all-encompassing at our five level, all right? But uh, Eric Lee Smith is my all-encompassing. See if I can get the glare off of that. The Civil War. Um, so. Um, this covers the entire war. It's got a beautifully abstracted naval battle system. Greg, when Greg was on the show, talked about how he thought it was, I don't want to paraphrase, I'll paraphrase what he said because I can't remember what he said, but I think he said the way they abstracted it was very well done. Is that fair? Do you remember his, I don't remember his exact comments. Um, they do have scenarios or, or scenarios are in here. Um, I need to retackle this. Um, this was something I pushed counters around, but I had no one to play with. And it, uh, it seems neat. <laughs> it's got your leaders, the leaders can upgrade, but I cannot say I've honestly done any kind of full war from start to finish playthrough for those that have, I think Greg has, um, he enjoyed it, but, um, this is kind of on a bucket list. I won't get rid of it because, um, the feel of it again the rules are great and um the only thing i even looked at recently was that there's some house rules that handle leaders um 
I never got to the point where I had a problem with the leaders, but as you get bad leaders, you can kind of park them off and, and know where nowhere land. Yeah, so you're familiar and that way they're not affecting you. And just reading some of the house rule stuff that was out there, I thought, hmm. So again, when we retire, Jed, we can have Vietnam on one table and the Civil War on another. So there you go. That is my you number know, five. A couple of things on that game. The, um, the All Civil War games seem to struggle with the leaders. Because, you know, Lincoln would kept trying to find somebody who was, wasn't a buffoon, would get in there and fight. And we have too perfect of information. You know, we know I'm looking for Grant and Sherman, you know, and I want to. I want to bury old what's his name, Fremont, hide him out there, you know. Well, um, the only one I ever saw that really got you that true Lincoln feeling was an old task force game, is Access and Allies type game called Grand Army of the Republic. Um, I didn't keep it because I'm not a big Access and Allies fan, but the leaders was brilliant. Mark Herman did it in um, For the People where you draw them blindly and have to play them. Then he had this, if you try to sack them and hide them, you take political losses. Um but yeah, it was amazing on that Civil War was for the longest time, um, and this is true about a lot of victory games, they pretty much made the game on the topic. You know, when it came, when I was BGG early 2000s, you know, you say, what's the best Vietnam game? You generally see that victory game listed. Um, you ask, what's the best Civil War game? There'd be good divisions between the Civil War and For the People, depending on how much you like card-driven games. And it's and um, even now, you know, you'll see it right there. Some people have liked the U.S. Civil War, which is um, Semenich's redoing of it with GMT. Um, and some people, I guess in his game, leaders come and leaders go based on a schedule. So um, Stonewall's going to end up leaving in 63, about the time you, you'd fight Chancellorsville. So um, and people haven't liked that part of it, that, OK, it's a little too perfect of information where for the people has a way for leaders to die. Um, but, uh, anyways, it's interesting to watch how they handle it, but that game still gets the pub and that's the only game I'm actually not used to be the only that and battle wagon, the old task force game are the only games I've owned three times hmm. had it got, I got rid of it cause I didn't want to learn two systems of rules and thought I'm going to double down that sin niche is going to be the better version with hindsight and things like this. And then I ended up getting again and trading it. <laughs> and then I thought, you know, I really want to give it a try and put them head to head and see how they work. Um, so anyway, so yeah, three times I've had that sucker. This time I'm holding on to it. <laughs> Hold on, look at this question. If you feed Jordy meat, can you design an ACW game with proper leader function? No, but he can. <laughs> he can fix a warp conduit and a plasma coil. And let me use some other Star Trek. There you go. My dog is named after the Star Trek engineer. Um, spilled like the K-State football player that played with the Packers. But but <laughs> I put a picture of him on Facebook recently. He's standing on his back legs holding the perfect balance and barking at me because I had just smoked up some chicken. <laughs> and that dog goes crazy for smoked meat. So <laughs> that's what that's a reference to. Yes, perfect. Now, I will tell you as well, as long as we're on the Civil War, um, as a kid um, in the early 80s, I wasn't – into the Civil War. It was all World War II mostly for me. That was where Same I was here. All right. So then I've grown into that. And even currently, with all the unrest and everything going on, um, for the first time, I read Frederick Douglass's autobiography, the very last one he did, found that book to be phenomenal. The interactions at one point with, with uh, Lincoln and uh, even with Grant afterward and his opinion, which then even led me to read uh, Stonewall Jackson, the, the book on him. And now I'm currently on Grant. And there's two books on Grant. I'm going to forget the title of the one I've got here now. But uh, um, Chair now, Ron Chair now's book. I'll have to look. I'll look at one point whenever you're showing the game here. Okay. Now, since you're gone, now I got to look. Got it on here. And come on, come on, come on. There you go, Mark. No, I do not have that one. Mine is, it's the, um, oh, shoot. It's the uh, American Ulysses. Okay. So it's uh, Ronald White's book. So um, I d yeah. there is one. I, I almost want two of them because I was talking to, uh, to um, um, Dan Masterson from uh, Strategy Page, and he, I think he referenced your book. I'd have to look, and I was like, hmm. 
and I was thinking that's interesting. But so enough on that. But I'm yeah. I'm not deep in. I have another. Grant's autobiography too that okay, he wrote yeah. right before he died. Yep, got and his family. Yep, didn't uh, that was um um he got helped out by uh, Samuel Clemens on that one, saying, "Come on, didn't he?" He was basically kind of the gave him the money to get it published or the connections, right? Mark Twain. I don't, I'm not sure. I knew he did that to basically give his family a nest egg right before he died because he had throat cancer. But oh, yeah. um, it really helped. Yeah, I like to get something like that an autobiography and then a really good biography because you know people in their autobiography never quite see their shortcomings. So, but they'll give you some insights the other people don't have. So, Chair, now I like him. He did the Hamilton book that he's, he's pretty well known for that that the, that the musical is based on. He did a really good one on Washington. He's just well known historian done some pretty good stuff so i haven't read it i just got it last christmas yep so i love the part is uh grant's ascendancy rises i love how everybody's sending him cigars i mean it's like the end thing i think they said he had like eight thousand cigars at one Ooh. point in time would just hand them out yeah i can just picture him coming in and then of course throat cancer but uh yeah i know they and i loved the fact i know we're getting off on grant but uh they had a lot of his, his uh, um, letters back and forth with his father, Jesse Grant, who was trying to get use the influence and also defending him in the press. And he kept saying, stop, just let it go. You can't beat the press. It was so funny because it's reminiscent. You know, people think the press is vicious now, whichever side you're on. And I know from reading stuff on Adams and things and the politics, it's always been vicious in the press. So, mm -hmm. sorry. All right, your number four. Maybe I've spent too long. Yep, Twain published Bye. Grant's autobiography. There you go. Boom. My number four, Tokyo Express. You betcha. You betcha. Yeah. It was funny. I kept blown away at how I got this for a really good price. I got it like for 60 bucks, and I thought it was going to cost me 120 and I finally noticed, oh, little hole in the box. But I guess... <laughs> You know, I didn't really get the game to put on a shelf and to put in a trophy. I got it to play. So I was like, eh, hey, knock 60 bucks off or whatever. It's pretty well. Right. It covers Guadalcanal. Torpedoes hit it. Yeah, there you go. Covers Guadalcanal, the, the campaign. And um, it's the naval aspect of it. I've always been looking for good Guadalcanal games and struggled in that aspect. I tried Panzer Grenadier, Hidden Movement. So that's not going to solo. Tried the Avalon Hill game used a screen like the old midway game um and i haven't really found one that handled the naval the land I mean, probably pacific war would might be your best bet but even it i had problems solo in it but this is a solo game and yeah you control like the american fleet and there's rules in there for how the ai works but it's not a dumb ai it's logical and, you know, Japanese had their vintage, their long lances, things like that. The Americans used the radar. So it builds this into it. And um, basically like basic and advanced rules. So you can jump into it, read a little bit, and they say play it until you feel strong with this, then move on for the extra details. A lot of bookkeeping goes on with it, but pretty smart system. Um, same guy that made Carrier, too. I forget his name because he didn't make a ton of games, the designer. John South Southard. Mm -hmm. But um, anyways, um, that was the naval game. I had another one Revolution put out, but used a lot of hidden stuff. That's been the problem I have with a lot of the Guadalcanal games is don't solo work the darn. You know, you're kind of at the mercy of finding people. So this one really scratched that itch and it didn't feel like I was sitting there managing AI. I, I don't like AI games where I'm sitting there managing it the whole time and oh by the way, now it's your turn, make your move, and then spend the next eighty percent of the time managing the fiddliness of the AI. Um, so anyways, so it does, it does that. Anyways, good classic game. Um, it might cost you a little bit of money though, if you're looking for it. it's one of the more expensive games by them, by the way, carrier is the most expensive one. Mm -hmm. You want carrier be looking 120 or more. So, yeah, you, you, it's like you knew what John was typing as you spoke there. Cause, uh, John here, he's wanted Tokyo express for a while, but can't afford it. Every time Jeb talks about it, the price goes up. It's called <laughs> the hand tag effect. I guess. Yeah, I'm Will Wheaton. <laughs> well, you know what? It might, though. It might, get it, it might get it reprinted at some point in time. You talk yeah, you think it would be. You think GMT would be all over this thing, and Carrier, for that matter. Um, yes. So, yeah, those would be two that would be high in demand, so I don't know what's up with that. 
anyways, that's my number four. I have spoken. Well, it's starting with GMT. Like I said, uh, Pacific War, which may or may not be on somebody's list. That's being uh, uh, P500, and it blew up. And uh, it's funny, Mark talked about that on the show, too, saying, this is a beast. Do not get it. If uh, warned, I mean, he warned again and again that it's unwieldy. It's, it's huge amounts of counters. And he said again and again, you've been warned, which means it'll double the sales. <laughs> you know, he had a funny quote about um, the, the campaign of that. Because, you know, this is, this is the 80s, and Grogs had to have their big monster. And I think he said he played through it twice, but he, his quote was, don't play the campaign unless you're in prison. <laughs> Got nothing else to do. But my buddy Grog Bill, he's played it. He's played the campaign. He didn't like card-driven games, so he's not a big fan of Empire of the Sun. And I mentioned that. I said, isn't this more for operations? And he said, I played the campaign a couple of times. I'm like, that's why he's Grog Bill. So <laughs> There you go. There you go. My number four, the Korean War. Let me get that. You got MacArthur right. Gosh darn it. You got MacArthur right on the front there with his big corn cob pipe. I'm sure he smoked that all the time. <laughs> Maybe when the cameramen were around. It definitely makes a statement. Um, so the game's operations level, it's the first year of the Korean War. So you've got all the back and forth. Um, you've got uh, a little bit of Chinese incursion. Then you've got the full Chinese crossing the Yalu. Do I say that right? I don't know. Is it Yalu? Yalu? The, the river there. So all of that is in here. Um, again, so operational combat. Um, um, you've got air support. Of course, it focuses it on the ground war. Um, you don't. It's an abstracted mm -hmm. air thing going on. Yeah, and, and then ground support um, gives you a little help if you've got it coming in, if I remember right. Again, it's been years and years. This is another one where, quite honestly, um, two-player game, and I played it just solitaire, kind of figuring out what was going on. Um, I, I This is another one. It must be as I get older or as I look toward my free time, and maybe it's just because knowing you and – Greg, and, and even if I can tackle Vassal, I haven't retackled. I was an early adopter of Vassal and was playing games on it. And then it kept, it iterated like five times and I've lost, you know, any knowledge of how to make it run. I know you've sent me some things and everything because that is really how I would play this. To, you know, it's just, did you do, did you do, you didn't, did, did you do the one for Vassal for this? <laughs> I redid it. You redid it. Uh, okay. Yeah, those old games, they didn't have Vassal modules, but no, I mean, think about it, no digital art back then. So, um, anyway, the, um, sorry, I was looking at Trevor's comment. The, um, so was I. So was I. Yeah, that thing, you? yeah, you would see the creases. And if you remember those old 80s counters, the way they looked, and it wasn't the prettiest module. So I went through, I was like a week in a, ho in a hospital room, so I had nothing else to do. So I was sitting there messing with it. And I mean, I digitally would blow those up and, co you know, color, copy, paste colors. And I took the seams out of it and um, went in and standardized the colors on the markers. I was like, instead of using them, just scanning it, um, I actually recreated the symbols, the infantry symbols, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it wasn't just back scan. And um, but st that way I was able to standardize the color so you didn't get the shading differences. You know, all of these were maroon, all of these were you know green, and made it look a whole lot better. Wow. Dabbled a little bit with, with on the vassal part of it with a guy, but I think I need to make a maybe a couple of tweaks. But haven't messed with it just to make it run smoother. I'm a real finicky that I want my vassal modules to go you know smooth as it. There's always ways to get around stuff. I always set up manual overrides, but um, yeah, it's one of the. So I probably need to revisit it someday, but I was real proud of the appearance of it, what it looked. You know, that thing's getting reprinted by Compass, like I think almost like right now, if within the next month, they're going to release it. Hmm. It's I part of the, like the France 1944, the designer series. Isn't it uh, the designer, I'll say his name wrong, but isn't it like Volkowski or something yeah. like that? Yeah. So, and yeah, that's, uh, good. Again, I think you're going to see a lot of these good to great games getting reprinted. I think they're hot right now. Um, 
People want to see them. The price has gone up enough that uh, they're hard to get normally. So come in and get the upgraded version. It'll look better, you know, usually. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, plus, that was one that the price would kept going up on it. So it's, it's nice to see it get, get reined in a little bit because, yeah, that's – I might be talking about that one, so I'll just hush up. Yes, hush. Hush. I might not, though. Um, you done? Okay. Yeah. Okay. My number three is – Gulf Strike. Um, this is Mark Herman. Did he talk about this in your video? No, we uh, we stayed. Um, I don't even think it came up. Here, we can give you a full picture if you want to show that some more because you oh. got Saddam's face on there too. Ooh, this is the third edition. Um, first edition was like a color version of this. You might have seen it. The second edition... Um, then it had the desert shield symbol and then the third edition was after the operation De yeah after desert shield desert storm came out so it was take it back i don't like looking at myself <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna leave you up there i'm gonna pop you in That'd be crazy <laughs> um, dream theater the um now nah, that one mark had a cool story i heard on a podcast once when that okay he put this game out in 83 and when Desert Storm started happening, he said he got home. I, I hope I'm telling this thing right. It's hilarious. Oh, there's this news cat crew out in front of his house. And he said his little daughter was real excited. Oh, they're here. you know. And they wanted to do an interview. And he said uh, the first question they asked him was, how do you how do you feel making blood off the, I mean, making money off the blood of dead Americans? And he looked at him and he goes, I made this game eight years ago. And they're like, what? And then they had to like huddle around together and talk. And then they had to change the whole narrative that he's not an opportunist. He's a visionary. And he said it kind of told them all they needed to know about the news. Um, but it's a really funny story. I mean, he tells it much better. But uh, anyway, yeah. And I'd heard about when, when Saddam attacked Kuwait. They you know, kind of got the big guys together. So do we have any simulations on this? And they said, well, yeah, on gold strikes. They had to bring Mark in to teach generals. Of course, you know, all those grogs are thinking they're all going, ah, oh, dice hate me. I, I doubt it was that. But um, anyway, yeah, the um, and then the Desert Shield expansion had the um, what they call it, the big left hook or something that they had done, that big sweep. Yeah, so it has that strategy built into it. Um, game is a beast. I made a geek list of my how tough games were on complexity. When I say complexity, I was talking only how hard they were for me to learn how to play correctly. Mm -hmm. Example I give, chess is a complex game because I suck at it and everybody can beat me and every computer in the world can beat me. You could beat me. If you don't know how to play chess, you could probably beat me. I'm that bad. But, but it's, easy to learn. it's a real easy game to learn how to play. I can I taught my kids and they right. beat me. No. <laughs> but no, but uh, so when I'm talking complexity, I'm not talking about the like go or something like that. I'm talking about how hard was it to learn how to play the game correctly or at least 99 percent you know not like i got half of it right and i screwed this stuff up and yeah. most a lot of my really top level stuff was victory games i had vietnam gulf strike um aegean strike which is i'll talk about that in a second but you know some of those things but but funny this thing scared me because i bought it when i mentioned about i didn't really get these games in the 80s when i got back into gaming there's this secondhand bookstore in Joplin, Missouri, changing hand books. And on there, they they're like half used books, half games. But, you know, in the back, they had this they had a section of war games and they had a bunch of old victory games. And that's how I got the Korean War, Omaha Beach, uh, Beachhead, I think it's called Gulf Strike. Um, they also had a G and Strike in Central America. But I mean, I was getting these things like seven bucks and I got a complete copy of this. I had no idea who Mark Herman was. I hadn't played We the People yet. That's why I figured out who he was about a year later. But the game had always intrigued me from the 80s, thinking, wow, you could play modern warfare. That's kind of cool, you know, back when it was half the 80s. But, um, yeah, that was a um, – and, you know, I just always figured I'd put it on the shelf and it'd look cool. And then I finally, when I started saying I'm going to play all my games, I ended up trading it. Then I had remorse because I knew who Mark Herman was. Like, if I ever gave this game a shot, it'd be great. Got a second edition copy, played it, loved it, and then found a third edition on eBay for a buck that was unpunched. Oh. So, yeah, it's like that was because the game don't go that cheap. I was going to just get the Desert 
Shield expansion added to my second edition. But yeah, I did get to play this at the BGG Con 2015, Gordo MG, and I sat down and played this. And we played it. We got about probably 80% of the rules right. I turns out I was a Soviet and I sunk one of his carriers and I was celebrating. Then we figured out after the fact that, oh, that was an illegal move because I flew past my range. That range is half and back. You know, if it's 20, it's like 10 and back. Instead, I was going, I thought it was 20 and back. Um, but anyway, the game is, has a really cool idea in it. There's two maps, a strategical map that's blown out at a much larger scale. And then they got these um, t more um, operational maps. And what it is, you can move between the maps. And like a big he a hex on the strategic map would be represented by like 20 hexes over here. And it has a system for how you go back and forth. Now, I'm as guilty as most people that I haven't got past the strategic solo, the strategic one. I think Mark said that most people just tend to play that one because it's the shorter one because the game can seriously take some time to play. But I mean, the game had this. This version has like 1300 counters. And the reason I knew my first edition was complete is I actually went in and did an inventory on the sucker before I traded. It was big. I mean, he has all these nations built into it. You can fight the Iran Iraq war from back in the 80s. A bunch of theoretical stuff. What if the Soviets and Americans went at it? But yeah, uh, so we played the high level strategic shorter one. And we had a blast with it. I haven't got to deal with it a whole lot since. There's a little bit of when you send you, you designate your units for more of the offensive or defensive. And like you send you put a counter underneath a fighter to tell whether it's like it going for air superiority or going to go attack, you know, things like this. So there's a little bit of hidden stuff in. I could probably work around that. But it's just it's a time commitment. So a lot of my victory stuff is more. I'm thinking a little bit down the road because I did have a lot of fun wanting to get to the table. But it's a you know, it's a beast. He made a game called Aegean Strike. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about it, if you know one, you pretty much know the other. And I wish more rules were like this. When you hold the rule book side by side, I mean, they're written identically, which is common. I've seen Mike Grinnell do that with a lot of his stuff. But where there was a difference in Aegean Strike, there's a star by it. So if you know how to play this game, well, you don't have to go read the whole rule book. Just look for the starred paragraphs. Um, the Aegean Strike, um, same system. It's a smaller game. So some people like that better. Uh, same system with the with the big strategic map and the operational. I had a harder time wrapping my mind around the strategy behind a GN strike. And then when it mm -hmm. came down to it, I liked Gold Strike. But it's one of those Jones theories. I have two games that play about the same. There's a way to link them, but you want to talk about a beast. You're taking a beast and a beast and putting them together to make super beast. Um, so I, I ended up preferring the topic of Gold Strike more. But the system's really fun. Um, Hold on, Trucker's got it great right here, Judd. You got to stop glossing over your picks. Fantastic explanation. I'm Good. sorry. I was like, you're all right. You're all People right. don't give this game enough love. And I, know. I haven't even bugged Mark about doing a reprint of this because I figured the answer is going to be no. I mean, first you got to update it for modern. Trying to find people that would develop this thing that could spend the amount of time. You know how much time I spent on France 1944? It's a fast game. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the amount of time it would take to go into that. I was like, I haven't even bugged him about it because I, I know that answer would be no. And then I'm not even sure it's sell that great, you know, because people love the World War II. The good thing is I've got a perfect segue of what you mentioned between Gulf Straw Strike and the Aegean. Yeah. But anyways, so, uh, yeah, the game doesn't get enough love. But if, you, if you're interested in the topic and you got some time, it's really a really cool system. And here's the kicker. The complexity is off the chart. But the rules, this is the great one's greatest rule book from what I read out of my 21 or so games. And what was cool, he I put this, I mentioned this on a post on BGG. And he said that thing went from rough draft to final copy in less than 48 hours. And then I, I put a comment, put a funny comment. I was like, and you wonder why I say the things I say about you. And he said, I was younger back then. But I guess the way he's told me was that he and Bob Ryer were like right there on typewriters, you know, 80s. He get it, hand it over to Bob and and that thing is beautiful as far as clearly explaining. And you don't sit there and what does this mean? It's really easy to, to grasp. And for as tough as it is, and you know, it's like I mentioned that Bob Ryer effect that he takes those tough rule books and makes them easy. I don't know how much that was Mark and him, but that is the best rule book I've ever seen by Mark Herman by far. Uh, forget DG had both striking. I never. Okay, yeah, I haven't you played. Were, you were cradling, but other popular. Got a weird. You were cradling the box like a baby. <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah. 
You were cradling. It, Here's the one of those games I'm a bigger fan than most people, but I'm not obsessed like I was with France 1944 because I haven't played it enough. But it was just love to give it pub because it never gets enough of it. You're good. Okay. And the segue that's there, you talked about a game that has the same rules that can just morph over. So I'm going to bring in across five Aprils. All right. Also, Eric Lee Smith, who may or may not have done something with a game that is similar to maybe the word bushwhack. <laughs> um, no, so Across Five Aprils is the same general rule set. It's really kind of five games at once when one, because you're going into the different battles with the um, different maps even included. So Bull Run, Pea Ridge, Shiloh, Gettysburg, and Bentonville are your five individual battles that are there. And then you've got a chip pull system that allows you to move your units around, but there's also a combat chip that when pulled now goes in and triggers battle between all the units that are in a position to fight. Now, this is something else Mark talked about, actually. This game also, I think, came out in 92, so he wasn't there when this came out. You can kind of tell the difference. They must have had a difference in the art because you can tell with uh, your more recent game, um, oh shoot, what was your, I can't even remember, your number five, I think, or whatever, but you can kind of tell the difference. Vietnam. No, sorry, Vietnam had the same artist uh, that did uh, did all the, uh, the ambush stuff. Um, the later games, you can just tell the difference in the art that was made or the decisions that were made. A little more slick, a little bit uh, less cartoony. Um, the chip pulling in here, what else? I had a note down here as well. No, I think it covered it all. Uh, it's the idea that you learn the rule set and then they work through the different battles that you can go into with the different maps. And this was slowly being reprinted. I had Eric Lee Smith on a live show. And do you remember, was it Compass that was doing yeah. this game? I saw Trevor's comment. I was going to tell him it is being reprinted, just they don't do all five games at once. I think yeah. it had two. Is that? Think. I think I'd had Getty. I remember that had Gettysburg and Bull Run one and two, and I forget the other two. I think one was a small skirmish. One might have. Didn't he have P shot. Ridge on that? Oh, it's right there in the box. Yeah. Yeah. Well, P Ridge is in, but I mean, the battles are in there. Bull Run, P Ridge, Shiloh, Gettysburg, Bentonville. But I can't remember the reprint did not have all of them. I think it was only two, if I remember. Yeah, I think Gettysburg and and I forget the other one. I want to say. But, P Ridge, if I remember, but I could be wrong. But it was neat. It is, it is being uh, reprinted. They plan on putting that out. Um, oh, what I was headed to was Mark had talked about how back then. So this game is in shrink, and people would pick it up. And because Victory Games used paper maps, trying to keep the glare off of that, uh, because they used paper maps, they were physically light. So we're not talking about the mental yeah. heaviness, but physically light. And people would pick up a game like France 1944 and go, there's nothing in this. It's There's nothing here. And they would pass on it. And this game also, for as much game that's in here, I think it suffered from the same from the same deal. But, uh, you know, it's that, that whole chip pulling system and the idea of how the combat chip comes out, I think, is, is phenomenal. Yep, Trevor says... Gettysburg and P Ridge were in the reprint. So they, it is being made, and there it is. And that is my number three. Okay. I have spoken. I have spoken. If they <laughs> need to put oh, the yeah. pictures. Yeah. No, I, gold strike. Gold strike. I can I don't even have to ask. I know Mark ain't ever gonna read. I mean, he might shock me, but I haven't even topped, you know. Dude's, dude's coming up with ideas all the time. I don't, and you know, I don't know. It sold pretty good back in the day, but I think today's gamer is a lot lighter than the '80s gamer, and I just don't think they'd go for a game that big and heavy and complex. So, well, anyway. what, what what he could do is parse it out, though. Too, it might be. I don't know. Could it be broken down into some simpler realms that would build on it? I don't. Know. I mean. Yeah, they got all those next war games. Maybe, maybe that's kind of scratching that itch for people. So um, I think you're right on there. You know, I wondered that'd have been a good question for Mark. Um, is why didn't it, since they were part of Avalon Hill? Why didn't they use mountain maps with victory games, or was it just a 
economy of scale that they weren't selling, but they had their own printer stuff right on site. Mm, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. That would be a good one. I, him pointing out that um, um, dot, the whole idea uh, was that a, a store would only carry X amount number of games from Avalon Hill. So by having a subsidiary, Victory Games, he could get, I don't, I don't know what the numbers would be. Let's say they only carry 10 Avalon Hill games. Well, now you got victory games, VGs there, and you got a whole nother 10 games out. And um, I don't know, um, you know, because the obviously the, uh, I mean, we'll come back to it, but the Dr. Ruth game had a mounted board and the, the backing of that looks just like some of the Avalon Hill games. So, you know, they, they use that system to print it. The paper maps had to be a little bit, make the game a little less expensive. So maybe they were trying to hit a, price point. That's all I can think of. But it was interesting that what Eric Dot, who was the businessman, was all he was doing was getting more product on the shelves by having them look like they were from different companies. Yeah. Now, they were different design teams. But Yeah, I remember the first time I went up to King's Crown and saw those up there. You know, you look at them and boy, they had such cool looking covers. They, they Interesting. And then you saw that subsidiary of Avalon Hill. But oh, the, I think he's still talking about that comment. I don't even think Mark subscribes to the. I could be wrong, but I don't think he subscribes to the forum for Gulf Strike. Because I mean, plus it's kind of a dead forum if you look at it. How frequently I haven't been on there for a while. But when I was looking at my stuff, it's like, yeah, it's, you don't hardly see any action on there. So I mean, probably don't get a lot of rules questions by this point. Anyways, are uh, you ready for my two? Well, I think I saw it. Yeah, Yee! the Korean War. There it is, changing hands, seven fifty. I made some Whoa. people jealous with that because it was complete. I thought either when I saw that price, I thought either this game sucks or it's missing stuff, and it was neither. By the way, somebody had a comment about changing hands. Um, uh, Robert, dude, if you're from Joplin, we need to party sometime. I go there usually once a year. If it weren't for COVID, I'd have been there last weekend. Um, Anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, the Korean War, um, you kind of hit up on it. And to me, it is when I was talking about Victory Games did the best games on the topics. If you threw it up there, what's the best game on the Korean War? That's probably going to be most people's recommendation right there. Mm -hmm. um, and what I like is it looks you, you it looks like it's a big game. It only has a medium complexity, but the rule books only the, ba the base rules are like 16 pages. And then it's set up to where you play North Korea attacks, you know, the, the Pusan perimeter, Pusan, I never pronounced that right. Pusan, Pusan. Yeah. Then you get the Inchon, the push north, the Chinese counterattack, and then Ridgeway takes over. It's basically five scenarios across two maps. You know, the first one's all going to be south. Then you're going to get in the north. And only when you get to the last, you end up needing both of them. But, you know, a lot of war gamers think, I got to go in and play the advanced stuff. I think they think this is for the babies and this is for the adults type of thing. But really what I've kind of been learning is a lot of the designers design stuff around the basic and then throw this stuff in there and don't don't test it as much saying, well, if you want more complexity, a la carte pick and choose what you want. I stayed away. It's like the last whatever eight, nine pages is advanced rules to tie them all together. And you end up getting the you know possible tactical nukes. Um, Russian intervention stuff. What if? And I'm like, I don't want that stuff. I just want to play the Korean War as it ha kind of happened. So, um, but the game was real easy to grasp. I mean, the rule book's super, really simple. And um, the scenarios are very bite sized, about the right amount of length. So it's not a really long game. It's very ideal for what it does. And the best thing, you don't get into the stalemate. You know, it, it's smart enough to end in May 51 and stops there. So you just, ee haw, nothing happens. Um, but so, yeah, I think it does the best job of covering that and the very intuitive system, too. I love the way it handles the headquarters um, and the supply logistics. And I mean, nobody wants to be quartermaster general. I think that's what Don Greenwood said. But if you do it some ways, it's pretty fun. And this supports your attack. How hard are you going to push on an offensive? Um, so, yeah, it does the best best job I've ever seen of covering that. And I think that's about because between us, I think we've covered it all. So that is my number two. Well, I have remember, scored. there's issues with like NATO reinforcements and stuff as well, because you have some choice on that, don't you? There's that 
a slight political element from memory. Well, the political parts were more of the advanced rules, which I stayed, like I said, I stayed away from that. Yeah, because I know yeah. that was in there. And then the, uh, what if, uh, if it turns into a nuclear war, that's good for <laughs> the Chinese and bad for you, the American player. Yeah, Robert, I used to go to Joplin once a week back in the 90s, go to the book barn and get comic books. That's how much I'm hanging out of Joplin. So. There you <laughs> so. go. That would be awesome. So it survived the uh, massive tornado that came through Joplin, right? Yeah, that thing went right over the top of my sister's apartment. She lived in the basement, and everything above was ripped. Just Ooh. Yeah. Well, like, um, you remember when I mentioned that a long time ago, I said I had the Defiant ornament from DS9, and I gave it to her because I thought it was ugly. Tornado took it. She always says, well, the tornado's playing with it now. <laughs> so. All right. So my number two, you have seen... I will say just a little bit more on Tokyo Express. Let me get that glare off of there. So uh, Judd's nailed it already. It's it's the uh, Guadalcanal naval battles in the area. Um, you know, the Japanese really owned the night. And, uh, and the way they show this and the way solitaires use, again, I need to tackle this. This is another one where when I had it, it was too complex for me, I think. And I was kind of like, eh. And there's, I am not a master of this game at all. It's kind of on my bucket list to, I think now that my brain's gotten a little bit better and I understand games more, but I love the whole concept of um, you never know when you're going to get hit. And uh, so that's a surprise and you got to prep and you got to plan. And then, and then when you get hit, the Japanese have the advantage. They have better torpedoes, all that going on. And um you know, again, it was me mostly pushing pieces around and playing with it. Uh, you've actually fully tackled this, haven't you? I've handled the opening parts. I haven't handled all the advanced rules. But, yeah, the great thing is it's you read, I don't know what it is, about six, seven pages, and it teaches you the core. And I'm still at the phase of I haven't mastered it. My first thing was run right at it. I was trying to close the gap as the Americans to take away their long lance advantage. Right. Um, not sure it's a smart strategy, but um, I got lucky on a few hits and won it, but that's because I rolled hot. Um, but the key, the key here is that it's the solitaire system isn't, I mean, it's just it facilitates what happened and, and it gives you that surprise element because that's one thing I love about solitaire systems is it it is baked in that you you need to plan and be surprised. And that's yeah. what I love about Solitaire in general. You don't have perfect information. That's part of the game. So, yeah, the great thing on that is you don't have to read a ton to play it, but then you play it and you see enough to say, do I want to put the time investment into learning the rest of this? You hate to take a game where you spend a ton of time and find it's kind of lame. It's a little better. You know, you've already played those. I surely have where they looked better on paper. Then when you got them out there, they were kind of like, eh, that's it, you know? So, yeah, yeah, Spider-Man, dude. Oh, I didn't have my coffee cup. I chugged it down before I ran down here. Yeah, he's actually Spider-Man's right, right there. <laughs> that, right. that giant hole, by the way, is Victory Games up there. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, so, uh, so Tokyo Express, you you really covered it, so we're good to go again. Oh. Solitaire games, love, love, love. That's kind of where my deal is. I actually have grown more into two-player games as I've got older and relish that as well. But I love what you can get surprised in a game. That's yeah. solitaire. When I play solitaire, um, that's why I don't play like a lot of Eurogamies and Ameritrash, because that's more about what the guy's saying and uh, searching for Bobby Fisher. You play the man who's playing the board, you know, <laughs> or, you know, when Aaron and I are playing in Ameritrash, he, he's a notorious, terrible die roller. I don't know why, but, you know, it's those moments I love. But um, when I play war games, like I've really been getting into Men of Iron and stuff like that. And, yeah, the scenario is really imbalanced, but I just want to learn about the history topic I don't know about. So, yeah, these type of stuff, I just love to set it up, learn something new that I didn't know about before. So works in that solitaire aspect. You bet. Historical Playground. What is your numero uno? I got I got a few um, oh, yeah. mentions. Do it. Two, I do not. I no longer own, but they're worth honorable mention because they were good games. Um, Ambush, 
if it weren't for that card, I would still own it. <laughs> oh, that come on. That's the cartridge system. That was Mark's idea. Uh, it was great for the 80s. Now I'm old I'm old and cranky now. <laughs> Get off my lawn, hippie. Um, and I actually asked Butterfield, because you know, he's kind of a tech techno guy. And I asked him about, you ever thought about putting that on a smartphone app? And he said, good idea. You want to do it? I'm like, no. First of all, you'd have to sit there and retype that whole book because you know, probably not electronic copies running around. They didn't have Word back then. Um, but if they did, made a, because that'd be cool. You know, hey, I'm on scenario, blah, blah. I'm on hex 3025. Punch it in. It tells you what it is. That would be awesome. I'd be all over that. I but um, on some but of the, yeah, missions, they, the missions I made, I need you to make a, a simple program for that because those are digital. I still have problem them. is I'm a dinosaur. I have it all in. I only know Visual Basic six, which is oh, it's a dinosaur. So you already lost your Apple users and your phone users. Um, but um, but yeah, actually, I was going to look into making it phone apps because there's all kinds of cool ideas I had for games. But then when I found out. You have to have a Mac to do this stuff because I have an iPhone. I'm like, I'm not buying a Mac to learn a computer language. Seriously, dudes, but is what it is. Um, okay, the other one was uh, Pacific War. Uh, sorry, yeah, Pacific War, um, the old Mark Herman one. I had a problem. I mean, it has a really cool system for when you're scouting ships. It might say you have to reveal plus or minus 50% of your ships. And so they'll tell you, because you put a counter down, it represents a task force. And you don't know what that task force is. You go out and scout it. It's kind of like if you remember the old Midway. You know, they're telling, flying over and telling you what there is. Or this actually happened at Midway. They'd get reports. They wanted to get in and get the heck out of there. So they tell me, yeah, there's carriers. And there weren't carriers. So it might tell you you have to reveal um, plus or minus within this amount. So it's imperfect information unless you happen to get lucky and get the 100%. Um, that's a trip. I'm sorry, just trip. I just got an email. I was like, wait a minute. I think this somebody just sent me an email from this chat. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is that? It was sorry. The, um, but the problem is I know too much. And I was really looking for that experience. Like when I used to play Midway with dad back in the eight, 70s, you know, you put that screen up and it's that tension of never knowing what's out there. Um, but um, look at that. Yeah. 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 Um, and I've always tried to recreate that, and I couldn't. That was a bummer. Now, um, my, uh, Sumter, Marcus Sumter, he seems to know how to solo a game. He's a pretty sharp dude, though. I don't know if you know him from BGG. Um, or maybe he's able to work around the imperfect information, but it's pretty cool. But And it's one of those that I'll almost take a look at again to see if I can fight stuff like Guadalcanal or Night Battles where it's not so important to not know what the enemy is made of because I'm launching carriers. Carrier ended up scratching that kind of itch for what you want, a solo game where you can have imperfect information. But uh, the uh, that, that that game, I wanted to say back in the day when I think, but when I go to King's King's Crown, they charge a little bit more than your average Joe. I think they were like 20 bucks for Avalon Hill. I want to say Pacific War was like 50. You know, it was intimidating. I don't know if you've seen that box. That sucker's huge. And that's not a game with slight, you know, when Mark's talking about light games, that thing, you pick it, you know, it's, it's got some heft to it. Um, yeah, but it was a great system, but I, that's why I didn't have it, because I couldn't really solo it. Somebody else was looking for it, made him a deal, happy gamers, games need to be played. Okay, the other the other ones I had on honorable mention, Hell's Highway. Quick note I want to make, and I want to talk about the, because it's not in my top five, but I do want to say this for those interested, because I want to show you. The one weakness on victory games. They were not really considering that gamers would get old. And the counters, you can't read them uh, without glasses. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Tiny, yeah. tiny font. Uh, dude over on Consim World, I don't know if you can see that. Um, versus, and I don't really think you can probably see this. Well, maybe. That's the original Victory Games, that little tiny text and how most of it's just empty space. This is the... I think his name is Chris Fawcett. He made his own counters. I, uh, you can download the sheet. I went to a dude who spent 30 bucks to get counters made. And you can see the color coded and very, very easy to read. So if you're interested in this game, highly, yeah, it'll cost you a little bit. It's not a really high price going game, but get the counters, save your site. Um, makes the game very playable. The other one I had on there, Carrier, just dabbled in it or probably would be in my top five. 
So that's my honorable mentions. There you go. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of chat about the carrier being out on iPad. I'm getting feedback. So you go ahead. You go with your number one. Okay, my number one. I'm surprised. I kept looking in the comments see if anybody's going to guess it. So, I I've got a guess. Go ahead and try. Because I'm getting ready to reveal it. Dang it. Now it means I'm probably wrong. I figured you'd have Ambush as your number one. Nope. Yep. Dang it. That's I'm a game kidding. I own twice. But anyway. Woo. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, this was, this is, I got the Oklahoma Oklahoma City store, 10 bucks. That's what Mark always said. I got a game probably cost, cost less than it would go for shipping. And I threw in that ham tag video. And I do like to say that I am the biggest fan in the history of this game. And I think I got a pretty good claim to that one. Um, I think even Mark would Mark would back me on that one because I, I was bugging him back in 2011 about reprinting that thing. Uh, I have talked at length about it because I did the development on the Compass reprint. Compass reprint is better in pretty much every way. I mean, the map mounted big, better counters. You can read them a lot easier. Um, Except for one thing, when you read the rule book, the original rule book will just bring a tear to your eye because it's so deep in its poetry. Well, that's because Mark wrote that one. I wrote the second one, and I'm just not the poet he is. But other than that, <laughs> um, the new one is better in every way, but it's kind of like Washington's War with We the People. Yeah, I love Washington's War, but if you didn't have it and you said all I have is We the People, I'd gladly play. Gladly play this. Still my favorite victory. But the problem, thing about victory games is I talked about how a lot of these are really big games that I have to invest in a serious amount of time. This is not this. That was always my theory on why the game didn't sell as well. Mark talked about the lightness of the game. I thought back then people, especially the audience for this wanted heavy games. They were the grogs, you know, the, the light guys are playing the Avalon Hill. These are the SPI guys like grog bill and stuff. Well, the game's got a low complexity. Doesn't take that long to play 130 counters. You know, I think the grogs like those monster sized games. I don't know. could, I mean, he's Mark Kerman, so we might argue with him. But when I saw it, total yeah, selling yeah. points for me. Plays great solo, easy to learn, short playing time. Wow, I didn't know Victory Games did such a thing. Um, short rule book. I mean, it's like 11 pages of rules. Most of the rule book's an example, the detailed example. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I still have my original. Um, I will probably end up selling if somebody's interested just because I had the new one, and I, I'm not into shelf trophies. But – Still, always my favorite. It's funny. Some people don't like the cartoon yard. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, but, um, and I did read, it was funny, back when I was up there doing the um, Korean War module, I also read, I've redone this one talk twice, took the seams out. So I redid the module for the original and then did the module for the new one, obviously. But, um, yeah, still a, still a great game and, like, really well developed because the core was already there. And the new game takes this one this is only one scenario where you're trying to get across the Rhine bridge it the new one will take you all the way to the end then has a couple of smaller ones like if you want to uh, uh, go up to um, Arna I'm uh, sorry uh, what's the name of that I'm blanking on the name the, the place they were trying to get the supplies to clearing the shelt ah just brain farting on the game name anyway it's a place up in Holland they were trying to open up the port <laughs> You know, they has that scenario, stuff like that. This one did it just once in there. Huh? I know the name. I know the name. Yeah, and it's, it's bad. It's right there on the tip of my tongue. It's heck to get old. Um, anyways, so, yeah, still my number one victory game. So I have spoken. Beautiful. Now, some of the guys were saying <clears throat> there'll be some echo that will happen. Antwerp. Sorry. Thanks. Antwerp. Yeah. There you go. There'll be some echo that will happen on, on StreamYard every now and then. And uh, so just bear with it as part of being on a live. So what will happen is it'll it'll be the software won't pick up. All right. Carrier, baby. What? Oh, it's good. I was getting ready to ask about that. I saw a comment. Have you played the computer version of that? Yes, I have it. It's awesome uh, because this is just, I mean, if you got a lot of time, and that's my problem, I don't. Um, it's great. Um, but the computer, the iOS version, and it keeps getting improved on, and then you can even 
oh, you got to buy the expansion, but you could then play it two player where someone's the Imperial Japanese Navy as well. But, um, you know, he, he, it's not a direct port, but he, the, I can't remember the designer's name of the iOS version, but he says it's, this is definitely what he was trying to recreate on iOS. And it's a blast. Um, you know, I would, I had to be careful with that. My boy will tell you, if I start playing a, a, a video game, I can get sucked in and time just slips. And this game, uh, this game is great. So look, before we talk about the iOS game, which I started to go into. So of course it's solitaire again, it's 42 to 43. Um, it's the, it's the hunting for the Japanese Navy and, and finding them and then launching and it's your search net that's going on. And then it's you um, keeping a cap up to protect, but also you got to go out and attack. And so it's all of that. Again, it's where solitaire really, really shines in my opinion. Um, the Probably the biggest downfall to board gaming for me in general is when you are playing an opponent, you have perfect information. Uh, having been in the army, uh, tactical level, I was in a light infantry company. You don't know what's over that hill or who's there or what's going on. And so when you're playing the game and it's fine, when you're playing a game with two players, anytime a game will do something to hide some of that perfect board information, I love it. Of course, solitaire solves all that. And um, I think this is a uh, phenomenal game. Now to step back in, let's see if I missed anything from my notes. Nope, got it all. Hide and seek in the uh, in the uh, in the Pacific. Boom! But the game, um, the iOS version of it, is spectacular. You know, I mean, the ability just to pause a game, step away, and come back in—that's good enough. Uh, but the way you start to see information as it as it populates in the game, um, perfectly perfectly done quite honestly so uh, go check that out someone had the name of it trevor right here i think uh well that's not the full name but uh it is if somebody wants to put that full name up again because it's definitely i'll be honest with you i when i got the ios version i thought i now need to put the board game version back up for sale because i can't see myself going back to it after playing um, carrier battles. Shoot, hold on. <clears throat> so after playing carrier battles on iOS, and that just it does what a computer does. It just streamlines everything and makes everything, you know, without you having to crunch everything yourself. So um, yeah, awesome, awesome game. And that's all I can say on that. Is uh, uh, this this was done perfectly well for the time but ios version of it carrier battles eclipses and it's a blast to play same exact feel yeah the um that's part of why i was asking now is this for the only the phone or no it's it's actually got to be on the ipad i don't think it could handle the phone if i remember right you had to have an ipad to play it um that's one of the things that killed me well you know some some apps got to be You've got to have the power. Maybe the new phones could handle it. Back then, my uh, iPhone 5, there, it wouldn't have handled it. And then the iPad handled it fine. My only problem is my youngest son, uh, his iPad was really old, and it, and it finally quit working. So I gave him my iPad, and now I haven't been able to play it. <laughs> so I could grab it back, but he loves his iPad. So it's a reason for me to get a new iPad. There we go. PC version of the game. I was wondering if it's on Windows because, yeah, I wouldn't. We oh. have an old iPad, but the thing doesn't hardly work anymore like they do, you know. So I was like, well, yeah, if it was on PC, I'd probably probably look going to look into getting that one. Um, Some games are just better made for computers when those that are real intense on bookkeeping. So let's see. I played on the iPad. Yeah. I mean, that's I had the iPad version. Um, and it's and it's great. What is this? Uh, is it Carrier Battles for Guadalcanal? Somebody can answer. I'd have to go look at it, but Carrier Battles is what I remember it as. So, Vorpal, um, an app is basically a program for your phone. I think, I guess they try to use that lingo now for um, Microsoft tries to do it to sound hit, but they're just a bunch of boomers. But yeah, it's basically the program. He's asking what's an app. It's, yeah, it's that. Yeah, 
it just it launches it a whole different way. It launches like an app does rather than you know going in and loading up the game and doing all that kind of stuff. So and then it's optimized for your phone or your uh, iPad device. Uh, it says the new versions on uh, Steam as well. It's it's awesome. It's literally carrier on an iPad or apparently now on a PC. So, but uh, great game. Um, I don't have any honorable mentions I'm going to throw out. You know what they would be. Um, the, about the only one I might be able to sneak in, but I didn't do enough play, was Open Fire, which is Ambush for Tanks. Um, but I picked that up. I picked that up back in like 2000. And uh, again, I never really sat down and played the, the mission after the mission. I always heard that that one, the tanks didn't quite work as well as like the troops did. Uh, that's that's something else I need to spend some time doing when I get a chance. But open fire is technically ambushed with tanks, so I'm considering it not something that I'll talk a lot about. So, and I haven't played through all the missions on it or anything. I just kind of push things around a little bit on it. So, yeah, I'm curious what, what folks are going to put next week because man, those guys put out a, you know, my. Aaron was really into one called like Panzer Commander. Showed this dude on top of the tank, you know, at the very top. And I've heard that's really good. So I'll be curious to see what folks see to say next week on some of theirs because there's a lot of good stuff we left off. Yes. What are we doing the following week? Yes, it'll be the fans. Oh, so we don't know yet. We'll figure that out as we go. We haven't talked really. Um, and we usually talk about that during the fan show. So, of course, the fan show will be um next week so you guys put your lists and gals put your uh your list in the comments and we'll cover that next week and then next week we'll also talk about uh what we're what we're going to do and do me a favor don't forget um race to moscow is not even out yet but if you go and uh, join patreon you can be part of the contest um this version of course means that the the rules are just printed paper but the map and everything on here is just phenomenal. So, I mean, you might as well have um, all the bits. There's all these plastic bits. So I just need to clear my shelf space. So name a B-17 for my other version of the game, of the uh, show, the B-17 playthroughs. And uh, donate on Patreon. Go watch the video for more information. And get on that. Anything else you want to cover, Judd? Nothing I can think of. Be We're out an hour really curious to see what folks say because there's lots of good stuff, man. Yep, yep. I I love reading everybody's comments. So definitely get on there. Try to do it the same way. Five, four, three, two, one. List them, and then if uh, you want to go into further detail on each one of those, do that below. That allows us to read them off really clean when we're doing the show. Um, but I don't care if you add tons of information. People can. Yeah. Read oh, it. for those. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Dream Theater. Um, the um, for those, if anybody has Hell's Highway and interested in those counters, if there's a, if there's not in, I will dig it. I'll dig through and find the comp. I mean, find out where to grab it, and um, I can if you, I can put the guy who made my counters. If you if you don't have somebody who makes counters, it's not like Kramer. I know a guy who makes counters, but anyway, no, yeah, I'll just awesome. breeze new life into that game unless you got great eyesight. Nope. I would, uh, you know, it's either buy the counters or get one of those big old uh, magnifying glasses while you're playing. So, but uh, Kickstarter, oh, I like this. There's a, needs to be a Kickstarter for new shirts for Judd. Judd no likes it. Man, I got a magnet boys. Yeah, see, he likes that. He doesn't want a new shirt on that. He wants that. <laughs> yeah, I'm such, an old, I'm such an old grog. I mean, on my phone, it's, I mean, that's all I listen to, Neil Morrison Dream Theater all year long, pretty much. Just, but one or the other, they put a new album out. There you go. Well, this is part of the reason why we do the fans list. Quite honestly, I love seeing everybody's different lists as well. And there's usually something that'll land on somebody's list, and I'll go, "Oh yeah, you know, uh, you know, that would have been something I would have thought about as well." So, um, you know what? We still need to do. There's top five war games about movies, but uh, Judd, people keep saying they want you and I to break down Midway, just do our own little show sometime. Ah, I guess someday. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'd, like to, 
That's what, like the guys who always tell their wives, I'll get around to it. That's funny when the whole lockdown happened, it said thoughts and prayers to all those guys who've been telling their wives for years, I'll, I'll get I'll get to it someday. <laughs> but, I was like, I got to get that movie, and I've got a bunch going on on my table already. So, Got it. So you don't have thing, to, I really miss the iOS, but it'd be a buried project. I was like, when am I ever going to, I still got to get around to making my Hannibal artificial intelligence. It's all sitting right here. It's haven't got down to sit program the thing yet. You know, I'm talking about us just doing a review of the movie. Yeah. I'd have to, I need to go watch it again. It seems like a lifetime ago since I've seen it. That was, you know, January, whenever. I know. I agree. A lot of things have changed since I saw the movie. Yeah. All I can say on that movie is I wish they'd done it almost like how Avengers has multiple versions. I would have loved the full movie on the Doolittle Raid and give everyone and have them all build towards something. But that's pretty ambitious and multi, 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 multi million dollar stuff going on. So it's not going to happen. Yeah, it was funny. Trevor's comment. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really bitter about that Lincoln game. That's why I never wear that shirt. <laughs> Greg, Greg ended up buying my copies. Funny, I put it on Facebook, and he ended up buying it. I was like, well, that's cool. Save me some shipping. There you go. Perfect. All right. Let's end it. See you guys later. Thanks for joining us. It was a blast, as always. I've got yeah. to go do some outside work, too. Let me click everything off. Hang on there, Jay.